happy Friday. Um, who's ready to go a bit deeper now on the Enneagram? Hopefully you all are because I'm going to go deeper today. And I've gone now through all of the numbers, what it's like to be that number, just super quick and basic. Um, hopefully you guys have had a chance to take a test. Um, and if you're not settling in on a number yet that feels right to you, that's okay. Don't stress about it. Sometimes it takes people, you know, a year to kind of settle in where they feel that fits that fits for them. And oftentimes the number that you are feels uncomfortable. You don't want to be that number. Um, and I'm going to talk about that a bit today because every single number on the Enneagram, do so you like my fancy artwork, um, has a corresponding vice or the like unhealthy vice and then a corresponding virtue. And so I'm going to go through those today. So you can have tools to grow and develop in your life. Recognize, you know, when you're in that unhealthy space, recognize your rumble strip, right? And cultivate the strengths and use them to, you know, grow in your life, your relationships, your health, all the things. So one thing I didn't touch on probably too much yet is that if you are, say, a seven, and it doesn't really fit with you, it doesn't sit well, um, you may not be a seven, but you could very well be a seven that's very flavored by your wings. And what your wing are, wings are, are, could be these numbers on either side of you. So a seven could have a six wing or an eight wing, and they're like salt and pepper. So if you're a seven, you're not gonna change into any one of these numbers, even though we all have a bit of them. If you're a seven, you're a seven, no matter what stage in your life. But different stages in your life, you could have more flavoring or salt from the eight or more salt from the six. Um, I'm a three. And while I'm more a two wing, I find as I get more mature, I am getting flavored a bit more with my four wings. So in the, investigate those numbers as well. And it might sit, um, sit better with you and understanding of yourself. So I'm going to do this exactly like I did the other numbers where I'm going to go through the triads. So unhealthy vices and corresponding virtues to cultivate. Each personality's vice is like an addictive, involuntary, repeated behavior that we can only be free of when we recognize how often we give it the keys to our personality. I robbed that quote from um, The Road Back to You, the book by Ian Morgan Cron. Um, so the gut triad, these... These guys up here, eights, nines, and ones. Um, the eighth uh, deadly sin or unhealthy vice is lust. And not in a sexual way. They're just, they're excessive. They're intense. They want to be in control and project strength. And that is because they want to mask weak or vulnerable feelings. Vulnerability is weakness to them, to be vulnerable. They see vulnerability in other people as a massive strength. And in themselves, they take it as weakness. The counteract, no, the countering virtue to work on and cultivate for that eight is chastity. So that is, you know, moderating their intensity, excessiveness, need for control, and then just recognizing the value and strength and the vulnerability. Um, so if you are that eight, there are 10 paths of transformation that I've written down for you. So too often, your intensity and lust for life runs the show Give a friend permission to tell you when you're going overboard or exhibiting extreme behaviors. Remember moderation, moderation, moderation. So I'm going to remember that when I'm talking to Todd. Um, to recover a piece of your of your natural childhood innocence, tend and befriend your inner child. I know that sounds corny and it sounds hokey and uncomfortable, but love on that inner child. Give that inner child a big hug. Um, I know you don't have time for this sort of crap, but I promise you it will help if you just have empathy for that, that child inside. Um, third, watch out for, um, for and avoid black and white thinking. Gray is an actual color. You waits out there. I promise you there's a lot of shades of gray too. Um, Another way, broaden your definition of strength and courage to include vulnerability. Risk sharing your heart at deeper levels with someone in your life. 
um, tell that story, your story. Uh, it's your testimony. That's why you are here where you are. It's beautiful. It doesn't make you weak or broken. Tell the damn story. Uh, remember that your tensity is to act impulsively. <clears throat> and remember it's ready, aim, fire, not fire, aim, ready. <laughs> Sometimes they get that backwards. Um, you don't have a corner on the truth market and the heat of battle. Stop and ask yourself, what if I'm wrong? Say that again. What if I'm wrong? Say it a hundred times a day. What if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? It's so easy, right? And you might be wrong. <laughs> um, your personality is twice as big and intense as you think it is. <clears throat> and what feels like passion to you is often feels like intimidation to others. Honestly, I'll never forget somebody telling me about Todd that because he's so intense, that this is her words. I feel like when he's talking to me, he's staring, his eyes are staring into my soul. <laughs> I, it, so it cracks me up, but this is really how he comes across to people, but he, he wouldn't have a clue that that's how, he, how intense he is, but he's an intense person. And that's a, a beautiful thing about you eights. It's just, but remember, sometimes it's a little intimidating to others. So offer an unqualified apology when people tell you they feel like you maybe ran them over. Um, don't always play the part of the rebel. Try not to pit yourself against appropriate authority figures. They're not all bad people. Not everyone's dumb. Not everyone is out to, um, you know, for their own agenda. You can open up and let people in. You can trust people. I promise you. It's, it will, it will hurt you less than it will fill you with amazing people in your life. Um, all right. So when also ninth, when you power up, get, and get angry, stop and ask yourself whether you're trying to hide or deny a vulnerable feeling. What feeling is it? <laughs> Try to identify the feeling. How do you use aggression as a way to hide or defend against it? Um, do you find yourself always on the defense? That's a, that's a, that's really unhealthy eights are often on the defense. Um, and then last, don't judge yourself or others as weak for sharing their tender feelings. It takes courage to drop your guard and expose your inner child. And I know you still hate that phrase. It is a real person. Your inner child is a real person. Okay, let's go on to the nines. I love you nines. Your deadly sin or vice is sloth. Nines are spiritually lazy people who merge with the priorities, preferences, and values of others to avoid conflict and maintain inner peace. They want to avoid conflict at all costs. Um, countering virtue to cultivate for you nines, diligence. Nines can assert themselves in self-actuality through consciously pursuing their own life's agenda, even if it arouses conflict and fear of disconnection. So how do you do this nine? How do you assert your authority when you're wanting to avoid con conflict? I'm glad you asked, because I'm gonna tell you. So 10 paths to transformation for nines. One, journal on, your, on this question. What is my calling or life's program? Am I pursuing it, postponing it, just to keep peace? Um, ask someone to help you, second, ask someone to help you find a task management or to-do system to help you stay on task. Nines notoriously start things that they never finish. Nines notoriously are, are disorganized or pull the trigger too fast, notoriously for that. Um, there are lots of great apps out there for this purpose. Three, practice saying no when someone asks you to do something you don't want to do. Practice saying no when you have too much on your plate. No, period. No, period. That is a sentence. No. Uh, four, be aware of the numbing strategies you use to avoid having to deal with life, whether that's a glass of wine, shopping, Girl Scout cookies, wine with Girl Scout cookies while you're shopping online, all the things, right? Uh, five, don't be afraid to have opinions and express them. You can tell someone that you disagree. You're not telling them they're wrong. You're not telling them they're stupid or ugly or dumb. You're just telling them, hey, I have a difference of opinion and it's okay. If everyone was the same, what that would be so boring, <laughs> right? What will we have to post on Facebook about? I'm kidding. Um, please watch Social Dilemma, by the way, on that note. Um, 
Six, resist the urge to fall back on passive aggressive behaviors like procrastination and avoidance. If you're angry, be honest and open. Don't sit there and keep your mouth shut when the person on the other end, if they're now, they know you're mad, you're wearing it all over your face. Your silence, even on the other end of a phone, they know that you're pissed off. So it's okay to tell someone you're mad, you're unhappy, you were frustrated, whatever it is. Um, yes, seven, How understand how important and unique your voice is. People deserve to hear what you think, not how their own views mirrored back to them. I wanna hear what someone else thinks. I mean, it's great to be agreed with, you know, don't get me wrong, but how will I ever learn if people are just like bobbleheads? You know, I would drive me crazy. Um, eight, remember that what feels like intense, terrible conflict to you might just be a typical disagreement for someone else, especially if it's an eight. Um, so take a breath and engage. Don't let that eight bulldoze right over you. Um, nine, realize that your tendency to merge with others can be a beautiful gift if directed toward God. Um, others, other types envy the spiritual advantage you have, but don't fuse with another person and miss out the chance to become your own person. Don't be someone just be some way just because you think that person needs you to be that way. You are you and your gifts are yours. And if you're merging with someone else's ideas, thoughts, opinions on what you should be, how you should be. We miss out on that gift. You're not able to share it with us. Um, and then lastly, when you feel paralyzed in the face of a decision, consult someone who won't tell you what to do. Don't ask an eight, because <laughs> an eight will solve the problem, right? Don't ask someone to tell you what to do, but rather help you tease out what you want to do with it and then do it, right? It's, I mean, nines, I feel like of all the numbers probably would benefit from life coaching. Well, we all would, but they really would a lot. I mean, we all would. I'm not going to say them all. Ones, you little perfectionists, you, you, you improvers, um, as another, as another term. So the vice, deadly sin. So the, this is one of the two that they added. So there are seven true deadly sins. The two they added is anger and deceit because they weren't deadly sins in the Bible, but, um, One's is anger. One's compulsively strive to perfect the world and become chronically resentful toward those who cannot live up to their standard, particularly themselves. Their anger is most directed inside. Um, what is a counter, countering virtue they can cultivate, you might ask? Patience. One's can learn to accept that there's more than one way to do things and have patience with the world and themselves for being imperfect. So you ones, how are you improvers going to continue to improve yourself and therefore sharing your gifts with the world? Here are your 10 paths to transformation. Number one, uh, awaken self, to awaken self-compassion, try to capture in a journal the typical things your inner critic says to you and then read them aloud. If you do that, you're going to realize you sound like a jerk. And that's what you're, that's how you're talking to yourself. So write them down, read them out loud. And if you would not say that to your grandma or my seven year old, then you can't say it about you. Um, number two, when the inner critic activates, smile and tell it, or tell it you hear it and appreciate how it's trying to help you improve or avoid making mistakes, but you're taking a new path to self acceptance in life. I mean, audibly have this conversation with your inner critic if that's what it takes. Um, and sometimes that's what it takes. I talk to myself all the time. I think it's the best therapy out there. I have a lot to say to myself. Um, number three, resist the urge to give other people to-do lists or to redo their tasks. Do not make spreadsheets for someone who's incapable of organization because that's just going to drive you crazy because they will F up your spreadsheet um, and it, it will make you even more frustrated. Um, instead, catch people you love doing things right and tell them how much you appreciate them for that. And you will shock the hell out of them, I can guarantee you, when you start just talking about all the things they're doing right instead of correcting what they're not doing right. Um, when you're ready to dive right into correcting injustice or right or wrong, first ask yourself whether the passion you feel for that issue is really misplaced anger for something else. Um, 
five, let your seven and nine friends help you learn how to relax and have fun. I can't wait to do the Enneagram um, as it relates to how, how all these numbers handle their finances. Ones are, I mean, they need a fun, like a fun line item in their budget. Um, the work will still be there tomorrow. You can have fun. You can take a day off. You can relax. Don't feel guilty that you're not doing 14 things at once. Remember, multitasking just makes you a dumb meth addict. Um, six, if you find yourself procrastinating, think about the reason why and not hate on yourself because you're procrastinating. Number seven, are you reluctant to get going on a task or project because you're afraid you won't be able to accomplish it perfectly? Pick up a hobby you enjoy but are not especially good at doing and just do it for the love of it. Just because it's fun. I did, I'm not a one, but I took up golfing. I want to be really good at it, but you're just not right away. Um, I love to paint. I suck at that. And it's fine. I'm totally good with that. And I say that like not as a word curse that I'm putting on myself. It's just fun. Um, forgive yourselves and others for your mistakes. Remember, we all make them and we'll keep on making them. So just forgive and move on. Number nine, see whether you can catch yourself measuring yourself against others to see who does a better job, works harder, or meets your definition of success. Comparison is the thief of joy, right? It truly is. So catch yourself doing that. And just remember that mantra. Comparison is the thief of joy. It is stealing your joy that you just took up this hobby and you, you know, of painting um, for the joy. And then... You compare yourself. And then lastly, be aware how you receive criticism from others and try to accept it without being defensive because you're not perfect. There I said it, you're not perfect and that's okay. There's not a single person on this planet that has mastered perfect perfection. We all, we all like to strive for perfection. Well, maybe not all of us. A lot of us like to strive for perfection, but it's, it's not a destination. It's a journey and you'll never get there. Um, so hopefully this is helpful for you guys and that gut triad. And if you have any questions on the Enneagram, please shoot them out to me. I love talking about this. We're gonna go so deep on the Enneagram in our leadership retreat this year too. And it's just such an amazing tool to be able to recognize your rumble strip, and then just have such compassion for others. So wishing you tons of success and personal growth through this Enneagram journey. And I will see you next week when we go through the next triad. I'll go through the heart triad, the twos, threes, and fours. Have an awesome week and see you soon.